Today we're going to look at cell transport, which involves both passive transport and active transport. But first let's look at the membrane of a cell. There are lots of pieces to the cell. You'll notice that it is a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipids are these little fat balls with tails. Bilayer, bi means two, so there's two layers on the inside, okay? So these outer balls are what we call polar heads and they are hydrophilic. Hydro means water. Phil or Philadelphia, think of Dr. Phil, it's about love. Philadelphia is a city of brotherhood, so hydrophilic, these are water loving. And then it has what are called nonpolar tails. These are fats, they're lipids. So there's like an oil layer that runs between the middle and those are what we call hydrophobic. So think of things that you have a phobia or you're scared of. So this is why we don't dissolve when we take a bath or a shower. So that's the basic bilayer. You notice this thing in the middle here is called a transmembrane protein. It's also sometimes called an integral protein. It goes all the way across and things can actually pass through this protein. There are lots of different types. There's some called channel or ion proteins, carrier proteins, and the sodium potassium pump. We will discuss these in more detail a little later. Also within the phospholipid bilayer, you're gonna see this little molecule here, it's called cholesterol. Cholesterol, we actually need a little bit of cholesterol and it's a stabilizer. It stabilizes this uh, membrane. Cause these are like lots of little tiny little balls that are three dimensional all the way around. We also have something called a peripheral protein. Peripheral is like a peripheral pass. Like you play in rugby, you throw to the periphery, to the side, like your side vision. And so what this is about is about communications. This is how things communicate with other cells. And there's a little tiny chain off of here called a carbohydrate, carbohydrate chain. And that's kind of like a little antenna. So that's how I try to remember it. So this is called the fluid mosaic model altogether because all these pieces are sort of together and they're moving around all the time. We have something called inside the cell, which is intracellular and outside the cell is extracellular. The first type of transport we're gonna look at is called passive transport. And like the word passive, it kind of means that you doesn't require anything. It does not require any energy to, in order to operate. It happens sort of naturally. It's like how water flows downhill. It moves materials from an area of high concentration to area of low concentration, which we call down the concentration gradient. So remember, it goes from high concentration to low concentration. So if we have a lot of molecules on this side and no molecules on this side, it's going to move to even out. Nature likes things even. The first type is something called osmosis. Osmosis is movement of water from a high concentration of water to an area of lower concentration. And so this is basically high to low. And basically water molecules move right through the phospholipid bilayer. They just flow right through that uh, without a problem. They don't dissolve it, that's osmosis. Another one is called diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of uncharged particles from high to low. So for example, in your lungs, oxygen flows right through and carbon dioxide flows back out again. The last one is something called a channel protein. Think of a channel. So this is a channel and this is how ions move. It can also be called an ion channel sometimes. Ions have a charge to them. So for example, we have calcium here. There's a lot of calcium on this side, no calcium on that side. They're gonna flow right through that. So those are the three basic types of passive transport. The second type of transport is called active transport. And like the word active, it requires energy in order to, to operate. And we use the currency of ATP. ATP is like money for the cell. In this case, we're gonna move from a low concentration to a high concentration. So this is like swimming against the current, okay? So for example, here is a low concentration. There's not a lot of molecules over here. There's a whole bunch over here, but we're gonna push these guys 
to that other side. And there's a number of ways that this is accomplished. There's one called the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump, you can see outside of the cell, we have sodium. Sodium is salt. And inside the cell, we have um, potassium. And so what we're doing is we're pumping sodium outside of the cell, three molecules at a time. So this opens and releases three sodium. Simultaneously, two molecules of potassium come in, it closes and then opens the other side. Na is the symbol for sodium. K is the symbol for potassium. It does require energy in order for this to operate. So think of this. Salt is really bad for our bodies in a large amount. So we are constantly pumping sodium outside of our bodies. And potassium is something we need. We get it from like eating bananas and things like that. So we're always bringing bananas with potassium onto the inside of our body. The next one is called a carrier protein. And a carrier protein has basically three steps. So in this case, we're moving glucose. So this is the outside of the cell, and we need to bring in this glucose to the inside of the cell. Here's our phospholipid bilayer. These are the heads. This is the protein right here. So first of all, you see that it's binding. It shields it from the oil layer, because sometimes that oil layer could dissolve stuff. So we shield it from that layer and then it's released inside the cell. And again, this also requires energy in order to operate. Two other types that we need to go over. This looks fairly complicated, but it's not as bad as it seems. Endo, if you take N in Spanish, N means in. Cytosis basically means inside. Cyto means cell. So we move materials into the cell and that's accomplished basically two different ways. One is called phagocytosis, which is the intake of large particles such as bacteria. So if this square was my bacteria, you can see that this is the phospholipid bilayer. It invaginates or dents in. It then creates a vesicle around it and it's taken inside of the cell. Pinocytosis is thinking of pino, um, Pinot is basically a liquid. Think of a pina colada or a pinot grigio wine. Pinot is a type of liquid. Cyto means to take inside the cell. So here's some liquid. You can see this is the phospholipid bilayer. It's invaginating and denting in. It's creating a vesicle with fluids on the inside. So these are all about taking things into the cell, endocytosis. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is exiting. So this is inside the cell. It's wrapped in a vesicle. Maybe it's been delivered by the Golgi apparatus. Exo, think of exit, it's going to meet up with the cell membrane and it's basically spit outside of the cell and it's gotten rid of. So that's exocytosis. Endocytosis and exocytosis.